God bless you guys. I, I love coming to church. This is a great place because we're in an atmosphere without limits. We go through real problems and real bad news and real losses. That's real. And never did God promise us that we would all have 100% good days. But he did promise us that he'll never leave us nor forsake us. And, and all, all, all I mean, that all he means by that is that while you're going through the valleys of the shadow of death or struggles, and it seems like you're surrounded by bad news, uh, enemies, and it, and, it, and it always seems like bad news comes like, like waves. It just hits you. And the purpose of the enemy coming against you like a wave and it hits you and it hits you is to break you down. And, and when you feel broken down, that what, your mind gets broken down and you could actually get a nervous breakdown, mental breakdown, because the waves are hitting you and hitting you. But the question is, what are you going to use to fight these waves? And the scripture says that we have a shield of faith. That means I'm going to get through this because God promised me that he'll never leave me nor forsake me. He promised me that all things will work together for good. He promised me that I'm more than a conqueror. He promised me that he conquered death. He promised me, come on, he's promised that I just go back. He promised as I walk through the valleys of the shadow of death, I don't need to fear any evil because he's with me. And when we come to atmosphere like this, it's to remind us of the truth. Jesus' name is above your failure. If you've messed up, what do you think? Like Jesus is saying, oh man, you messed up so bad I can't help you. The truth is Jesus is saying, you messed up, I came for mess ups. Come on, Jesus did not come for people that live perfect. He came for sinners that need some help. Is there anybody that needs some help? The, the, how, God gets, how God gets credit out of this, how God gets credit out of this, people look, yes, you've made mistakes. Well, join the club who hasn't. What are you going to do? Just be depressed about the mistakes that you've made? Stop living in the past and realize there's a God that wants to help you even though, come on, help you even though you messed up. And then he gets the credit because everybody knows when you start succeeding, when you have joy in your struggle, when your marriage gets restored, like, like their marriage was restored, when your mind, come on, you came in here, we're hearing voices, but by the time you're done, you got peace of mind, you had demons chasing you, now you're a demon chaser, come on, you used to walk the streets as a prostitute, but now you're walking the street, come on, as an evangelist, who's going to get the credit out of all that? It's going to be Jesus, because when you were struggling and everybody left you, you called upon the one that promised, I'll never leave leave you nor forsake you and if you call on me I'll help you come on this help is for real we're not talking about a religion we're talking about a savior that resurrected from the dead he's alive and he can help you resurrect from your situation we're building our faith as we're hearing the word we're getting instructions instructions and if we'll follow the instructions, this is the problem, is that we got the best instruction manual in the world. And, when, and this idea, we're still trying, we're trying to build it without looking at the instructions. Have you ever done that? Like get something and then try to build it without looking at the instructions? And then you end up with a whole bunch of extra screws? And just throw them away? <laughs> And then your kid's riding that thing that you're supposed to, without the extra screws, down the hill, it all falls apart. All right? You're wondering why it don't work. And this idea, maybe you don't know how to make it work. Or maybe you know you just don't follow instructions. And we're here to remind ourselves of the instructions. I, this, this, these instructions absolutely do work. And, and this is the idea. Hopefully you get it. 
you really get it, you get the help, you get the transformation, you get the joy back, you get your peace back, you get your freedom back. Come on, you get, come on, you get your mind back. Come on, you get it all back. And hopefully, you don't stop there. Come on, you don't come to church just to fix your life. You come to church to surrender your life to the, G come on, to the Savior and you live for Him. And then God uses you, come on, to be a world changer, a family changer, a business changer, a city changer. That's how it works. And that's called leadership. And we're going to talk a little about leadership. First, you got to be led. And then after you're led to your victory, you can lead others to get there. Before, uh, it's this idea, a stubborn person will never succeed. They'll only succeed at being stubborn. You succeeded. Good job. You're stubborn. You're a hardhead. But your life's never going to change for the better. There has to be a time where you realize, man, I messed up. I need some help. Come on. Is there anybody leadable tonight that's not going to resist the teachings and the instructions? It's all going to make sense, right? And don't tell me, well, Jesus is good for you. But, you know, not for me. The truth is, you need Jesus. Everybody needs Jesus. And there's only one way, come on, to have a full life. And that's why Jesus says, come unto me, all that are tired and wore out. I'll give you some rest. Is there anybody that needs a new start, a new beginning, eternal life in this place? That's so good. So glad everybody's tuning in online. We're going to study the Bible, and we're talking about leadership. And tonight, we're going to be talking, continue talking about how to become as an influential and successful leader. Now, if you can master the skill of leadership, this is what's so great. First, it starts with self-leadership. If you could start leading yourself properly and stop letting the devil lead you. Come on, you used to see those cartoons. There's a little devil on one shoulder and an angel on the other. Some of you have been listening to the devil. He's getting bigger. Come on, you're walking in like... It's messing you up. You're out of alignment. You need a chiropractor. I'm just kidding. No, but the idea is it's time to stop listening to the devil's voice, that, that voice that tells you you're nothing, that voice that tells you you're failure, the voice that tells you you're a reject, that voice that tells you you'll never amount to nothing. And you got to stop following that voice and, and listen. Come on, tonight, follow the greatest leader of all time. His name is Jesus. And I pray you do that because you follow a good leader. You can become a great leader. Father, we just thank you for this service. We ask you, Lord, to teach us, Holy Spirit. And we're all at different levels of faith here, but I pray that everyone's faith will grow today in you. In Jesus' name we pray, amen. So let's answer just one question, and, and it's going to be one point message that we're going to drive home. And how do we become an influential and successful leader? Now, leadership is really important because if you're going to help someone, they're going to have to let you help them. Say it with me. If you're going to help someone, they're going to have to let you help them. Even though you have the answer, if they don't let you lead them, uh, you can't help them. And that means there's people on the streets today that are struggling, that are strung out, living in the cold. And unless someone comes into their lives, loves them, and builds trust with them, they'll remain on the streets strung out because they won't let you lead them off the streets. And not always. When we started this church, uh, God gave us a strategy to go out there and love some people before we led them. And I remember when we started this church, we didn't have a church building. That meant that when we were on the streets, there was no place to invite them. And, and what God told us to do, he had said, go out there and love the people by finding their needs and meeting them and being the one consistent thing in their lives. So what we did was we visited neighborhoods, and I visited a neighborhood, and I went to that neighborhood for right around three months straight, building relationships with the people. I found out what their needs were. Some people were hungry. So what I would do is go to the grocery store and buy groceries the way I'd like them, and buy them food I would eat, and I'd drop it off and give them the groceries. I found people that needed just a, a visit. They had nobody visit them. They were lonely senior citizens living on a block, and no one visited them for years. And what I did was, me and my wife, and I bring my girls, 
I'd visit that house every single week and let grandma know we're here for you. Maybe drink a little tea with her, let her know we love her. And it wasn't just one visit, it was a weekly visit. There's some people that will not let you lead them until you prove that you really love them and you're consistent with them and you don't want nothing from them. Real leadership is not using your leadership for self-advancement. Real leadership is using your influence to advance others. People aren't always convinced because they're used to being hustled. They're used to being taken advantage of. And that's the reality. And most of their leaders in their lives have walked out on them when it wasn't convenient. You'll never become a great leader if people could offend you out of loving them. Before you can lead someone, you got to get through their difficulties. You got to get through their rejection. You got to get through their anger. You got to get through their dysfunctions. You got to get through the cussing. You got to get through all of that. And after you get through that, you might convince them that you love them. But I've learned this, that no one will follow you until they know you care. And that doesn't always happen overnight. That might take some work. Some of your family members, you've been inviting them to church, but they haven't got a message yet that you really love them. Because when, you, when they cuss you out, you cuss them out. And you might not use cuss words. You might use something like this because you're a Christian now. You probably say something like this. You're lucky I'm a Christian because if I wasn't a Christian, I'd beat you. That's the same thing I said, I'll beat you down. We got some Christian cussing, gang banging. Right? And, and, and every time you do that and you get out of God's character, you're actually convincing them that you're not worthy of being followed. And I'm not saying that you can't rebuild that church. We're not losing, you're not losing your salvation. You're losing your influence. And when you lose your influence, you can't help no one. No one will follow you if they don't trust you. Say with me. No one will follow you if they don't what? It's really important. Leadership is really important. So how do I be a successful leader? I need to lead people out of the addictions, out of the bondage, out of, uh, come on, out of the dysfunction, out of going to hell, out of the poverty. I got to lead them out. But, uh, but unless I become a, an influential leader, they stay stuck. Life is more than you living your life and you personally succeeding. You've really succeeded when you can help someone else succeed. When you leave this earth, who did you help? You guys, are you guys with me? Only leaders can really help people. What's a leader? It's one who has developed the skill and ability to influence themselves. And I, and I always say this, before you can lead someone, someone else, Lead yourself. Don't be the leader that says this, do as I say, but don't do as I do. No one will follow you because they're going to do what you do. And what that means, if you're going to be a person of integrity, you got to live what you preach. You guys understand that? That means you, you talk it and you walk it. Say it with me. You talk it and you what? They'll listen to your talk but they're going to look at your walk. That means your walk is what's going to convince them of your talk. Now, I don't, I'm not talking here, you need to live a perfect life, but you need to live a real life. If you mess up, just set that fess up. Don't try to act like you're all good and you got everything together. See, they, they, don't, they don't mind you making mistakes. They, they don't want you to be a hypocrite. You guys understand that? We're talking about leadership. We're still talking about leadership. And this is what's, what's, what's happening. We're, we're suffering in this world. I would even say in the church. And this is what we're, we're suffering from. We have a scarcity of, scarcity of leaders of integrity. Does anybody want to be a world changer? Come on. Do you want to come into a room and influence people? Do you want to, come on, do you want to have a following for Jesus Christ? Come on. Do, if every single one of us become leaders, there's not enough seats in this building. There's not enough seats in San Bernardino. God is saying, I am raising up a people that follow me, and I'm going to train you how to lead others to follow me. Right? 
One who has developed a skill or ability to influence themselves, others, teams, organizations, to think. Say with me, to think. You're, you're an influential leader when you can influence someone's thinking. And the reality, I'm talking about thinking for the better, not thinking for the worse. Because every one of us are leaders. And you either, after people are done talking with us, interacting with us, either they think better or they think worse. Either they're thinking holier or thinking more lustful. Either they're empowered or they're discouraged. The idea, your, your life is going to influence people for the good or the bad. And when we're talking about leadership, we're talking about in, influencing people's thinking for the better. Because their life will never get better until their thinking gets better. And their thinking will never get better until they're exposed to someone that's thinking better. We are here to transform our thinking so we could be transformed and transform others. You don't have a drug problem. First of all, you have a thinking problem. You don't have a marriage problem. First, you got a thinking problem. You don't, most of us don't have a poverty issue. It's the way you think that leads you to poverty. You guys understand that, right? Because if you start thinking right, what actually happens? Your emotions change, your decisions change, and then your results change. Does that make sense? Come on, that's science. Even if you're a non-believer in this place, I don't believe in God. Everything I'm saying is truth. If you think differently, you're going to act differently. And when you act differently, you're going to get different results. Is that true? I'm exposing some good thinking. The best thinking in the world is not my thinking, it's his thinking. Once you've developed a skill to ability to influence uh, themselves, others, teams, organizations to think and take the necessary actions to succeed through building trust. That's, that's the idea of what leadership is. Is that you help people to succeed by changing their thinking, changing their actions through this ability to build trust with people. And if you could get people to trust you, that they know your motives are right, and that you really want to help them, there's no limit of what you can do. Amen. Right now, you might not have a lot of influence over your kids, but it's not too late because leadership can be taught. Someone said, I can learn this. It doesn't matter how hard-headed someone is, a great leader, come on, can turn a hard head around. But you must develop your skills. That means you're going to have to sacrifice. You can't just live however you want to live. A leader has less freedom and more responsibility. See, a lot of us want great influence, but you're not letting the Holy Spirit even influence your thinking and your life. You guys get that? The Bible says there's going to be a group of people that have a form of godliness, but they deny the power that can make them godly. That means that they're Christians by name, but not Christians by lifestyle. That means that the Holy Spirit has no influence over their lives to change their thinking and behavior. Therefore, they have a form of godliness on the outside. They have a name, but they're not living up according to or living up to the calling. I guess they're women. I'm talking about leadership. Come on, we're talking about leadership. Once you learn this, you could go any place in the world and cause change. You could go any place in the world and turn things around. Come on, you could turn losses into wins. You're no longer a victim because you have a victorious mindset. Is there anybody here that wants to be able to influence people out of their mess and lead them to Jesus, help, freedom, joy, peace? It's leadership. Jesus came here to lead. That's why he came to establish a kingdom. Kingdom, what's that? They're establish a spiritual, he's a spiritual king. And he says, I came to establish my kingdom, my leadership over your life. And you'll, if you'll follow me, you'll experience the kingdom of heaven in your life. 
You don't have to wait to get to heaven to experience the kingdom of heaven. You can experience the kingdom of heaven right now if you just change leaders. Well, I just want to continue watching YouTube. Well, let those dumb influencers influence your thinking, and it's going to make you a dumb person. Some of us come up with the dumbest side. Where'd you get that from? Well, on the internet. <laughs> and then when you're not thinking right, you're on a, this is why the problem, you're on a road of being deceived. And when you're deceived, you don't know you're deceived. That's how deceived you are. And I know that's philosophy. <laughs> and then you start feeding those ideas. And those conspir conspiracies, and you no longer know what's truth. Reality has escaped you. And when you're living in a fake world, understand this, you're never going to get real results. Wow. Let's keep talking. Amen. So how do we become an influential, successful leader? And this is the one point. Imitate the lifestyle and follow the instructions of a successful leader. Success leaves clues. So how do you become a successful leader? I want you to get this. You learn how to be a successful leader from successful leaders. Leadership was, mo was meant to be inherited or passed down from one generation to the next generation. The next generation is supposed, to, is supposed to do greater things than the past generations because they receive the teachings, the wisdom, the instructions, the favor, and the resources of the past generation. When Jesus gave us a mission, he goes, go and make disciples of all nations. Teach them my commands. What he was saying is, pass on what you've learned to someone else, and if you've done that and they've got it, you've succeeded in life. Someone say, pass it, on. pass it on. I went to look at a church this week in San Fernando Valley. And the San Fernando Valley is represented over here. <laughs> right. And when I, this property is like a $25 million property. It has a school on it. It has a soccer field on it. It has horse stables on it. It has a farm on it. it. Has a mansion on the property. Has a pool, spa. I mean, it's just beautiful. Church, Sunday school classes, and then property to build. So what are you looking at that property for? Because someone told us that there's something going on with that property, and we, when we got there, we found out. The school used to have like 300 students, and now it only has 20. The church used to be a thriving church in the area. They're down to 25 people. And they're all senior citizens. There's no young people. There's no kids. And I said, what happened? Because you don't, I go, it doesn't make sense because this campus is so beautiful. How did this church get to that level? And this is what we found out that the pastor and leaders, the leader of the school, began to molest some of the kids. So the bad news spread. Their church began to shut down. The kids exited. And now, unless leadership changes, that church will never exist again. It'll never really reopen again. What that church needs is not to change location. What that church needs is new leadership. What that community needs is new leadership. But we believe, come on, as we're learning how to lead, we can turn that church around. We can turn a school around. We can turn a neighborhood around. We can turn a family around. Is there anybody that wants to learn how to be a successful and influential leader and bring life where there's been death? It's amazing. If you could just learn this skill. You know why a lot of us don't succeed? Because you don't know how to follow right. You know why some people don't succeed? 
You kind of follow, but you don't follow. You got to learn how to follow to the T. You don't kind of swing the bat like this. Swing exactly what I'm telling you, and you're going to make a connection with the ball. I'm going to show you how to hit. Well, I've been going to church. It don't matter how long you've been going to church. You ain't listening to the teaching. Well, I am listening. You ain't doing it. You kind of do it. So when you kind of do it, you kind of don't get results. Amen? Come on. Someone's new like, what? What's going on? No, but I, under, I, under, I understand that if you're new today, this does make sense to you. And this kind of teaching is what's going to get you out of your pit. This kind of teaching is what's going to make you successful. This kind of teaching is going to make you victorious. This kind of, come on, this kind of teaching is going to give you some joy. This kind of teaching is going to lead you, come on, to some, to some peace in your life. And this kind of teaching is going to help you get to the position that you can fulfill your purpose. And that's leading people, come on, out of hell and into heaven, out of depression, come on. It's to the joy of the Lord. When I look at that property, I go, give me this property. Now, they're not ready to release the property because the leadership is not ready to release anything, but it doesn't matter. They're willing to maybe give us a few classes. I'll start from there. I'll use that class and I'll just start lighting that class on fire. No, I'm just going to, I'm not literally going to put fire in there. What I'm going to do is I'm going to cause change. Come on, I'm going to charge change, and it's going to start from there, and it's going to spread throughout the campus, and then they're going to have to get to the point and say, who's causing the fire? And we're going to say, Jesus, we're following him, and because we're following him, we're claiming this territory. Come on, give God some praise. We could turn it around. If you could turn one life around, you could turn around two and three and four and five, and then a city. Right now, some of you, are right now at the first level of leadership, and that's called self-leadership. You got to allow God to lead you out of the addiction, lead you out of the cycles of destruction you've been in, and God is saying, I'm leading you out so you can lead others out. Well, I hope things change. And God says, stop hoping and let me change you. Because until you change, your situation is not going to change. Well, I just wish there was less temptation. No, you're going to have to learn how to say no to, the, to Satan. And unless you learn how to say no and yes to God, the temptation is going to keep coming and you're going to keep falling. And what are you going to say? You're a victim? You're going to blame your mama? You're going to blame your grandpa? You're going to, come on, blame, blame um, Biden? Who are you going to blame? Maybe some of you guys are blaming Trump. The idea is stop blaming somebody else and just say, I'm no longer a victim. I'm a leader. And God, come on, the leader of all leaders, I'm accepting in my life. And I'm going to lead myself out of this alcoholism, out of this abuse, out of this depression, out of this cycle. And then I'm going to lead my family, my friends, my neighborhood, my city. Come on, is there anybody here that wants to learn how to be a leader? And then you can lead someone to church. We got too many empty seats in the back. Fill all of them in Jesus' name. Bring somebody Sunday. Say it with me, I'm a leader. Come on, say it, I'm a leader. I'm a leader because I'm leadable. You guys understand that? You'll never be a coach until you're coachable. Because you got nothing to teach until you've learned something. All right. Joshua 1, 7. Be strong and very courageous. So how does God want us? Strong and what? Well, he doesn't want you to be weak and fearful. He said be strong and what? That means when you look at life, you look at it with, come on, you look at it in the eye and say, we got this. Me and him got this. I know you look pretty big and you're a giant, but I'm not comparing you to everybody else. I'm comparing you to the one I walk with, my real leader. That's God. So really, you're very small. And the reason you're getting intimidated and the reason you're being overwhelmed is that the image of your God is so small 
that your situation is being magnified. And the reason your God is small, because he's not really leading you. And when he's not leading you, this is what happens. You're so far away from him, he looks tiny. Big battleships look tiny when you're not close to them. And what's close to you is like, oh, my, this problem is so big. And God said, and I'm so, and I'm the creator of the universe. Let's do this together. Come on, how many understand that? Come on, your leader, your leader's ready to lead you. Look, says, be strong and very courageous. This is how. This is how, this is how you're strong and courageous. Say it with me, leadership instructions. Say it with me. Be careful, because I, this is how leadership works. Imitate the lifestyle and follow the instructions of a successful leader. This is how you become a successful leader. Be careful to obey all the instructions Moses gave you. How interesting that this scripture does not say, be careful to obey all the instructions I gave you. Because what he's saying, if you're going to be a successful leader, you're going to have to learn how to follow a successful leader. That means they've succeeded, follow their footsteps, follow their instructions. And you'll get their results. Isn't that great? It, I'm, this idea, if I, if I, if I, if you think like me, and you act like me, you're gonna get the same results, good or bad. You're just thinking away. And the idea is follow. Look what he said. Follow. Did he say follow some of the instructions? Follow what? Say with follow what? Follow. You got to get to the point that you stop compromising the instructions. Well, I don't like that one. So let's change, this. let's change the Bible here. Or let me excuse the Bible. Wasn't the Bible written by man? You know why you're saying that and anybody else that says that? They don't want to be accountable. They, they still want to do it their way. So let me go ahead and white out what I don't like. Some people only like the scriptures that say, you know, God is love. And I understand why well, you should like that scripture, but understand this, God is also a judge. Amen. It's getting quiet up in here. Be careful to obey all the instructions. Who gave you? Moses gave you. Your leader gave you. Do not deviate from them. Do not deviate. If I raise up a leader in this church and I send him to a city, and I don't care what city I send them to, and they don't deviate from the instructions and the systems and the steps that we take here at the Way World Outreach, they're going to get the same results we're getting here because the success is in the instructions. I'm going to say it again. You'll never be a great leader until you become a great follower. You follow well, and then you can lead well. The spirit of pride and rebellion will not allow us to follow well and lead well. A lot of us love leaders that we're not accountable to. You know what, you know what preacher I really like? And ain't nobody from this church. And you know why you say that? Because as long as they don't know you, they're not holding you accountable, you love them. But you're not going to be accountable to a leader. Come on, that's not your leader. You're going to be accountable to the leader that is your leader. There's instruction that God gives you in this house to get success. Come on, in your situation, in your life, in your world. That's why God is teaching about leadership, because God is ready to make you a leader that's going to transform your world. Do not deviate from them. Do not what? Well, you know, I want to do my discipleship group a little different. I want to put my own teachings in there. Was that the, DV, the, the, the discipleship curriculum? No, but I think what I have is way more important. I'm going to teach my whole discipleship group how to do deliverance. And by the time you're done, you're possessed and everybody's possessed because you're under a spirit of rebellion. And I'm not saying the teaching wasn't right, your spirit wasn't right. 
And when you're deviating, you don't succeed, you fail miserably. Stop following, come on, a leader that's not your leader, because if you're following a leader that's not your leader, I don't care how much great instruction they're giving you, you're still in rebellion and sin. But what I like, who cares what you like? God, come on, this is not about liking. This is about following orders. Come on, this is about being a soldier in the army of God. God's not just going to give you instructions you like. He's going to give you instructions that you need to have victory in your situation that you're in now. Amen. Do not what? Deviate. Say with me, I am not a deviator. I follow instructions to the T. If we need to go to discipleship group, we go. If the next step is getting baptized, I get baptized. If I, if I, if I need to join a small group and be disciple in a, in a small group, I'm in. You guys got that coming? That's how you grow. You don't grow by doing it your way. That's why the Bible says when you, when you first start to pray, I mean, when Jesus taught prayer, it goes, not the, uh, thy kingdom come, thy will be done, thy will be done, thy will be done, not my will be done, not not. Do you know what Satanism is? It? Satanism, is it? Satanism is? I don't know what I said. Satanism? You know what that is? Doing what you want. It's, it's taking your will and putting it above God's will, and you're wondering why your life is so hellish. God says, wait until you're married. You say, well, I'm only human. I got needs. I got to sleep around a little bit. I got <laughs> And then you're wondering why you only get abusers. Then you're wondering why you only get losers because you're on the loser track. Come on, there has to be somebody here that's practiced delayed gratification so they can start getting the results that God has for them. Stop trying to get high. Be done with that so you can get the most high. God wants something better for you, but you have to learn to deny yourself so you can say yes to God. Amen. I want it all. Keep doing it that way. You're going to have nothing. The Bible says when you're willing to lose your life, you'll gain it. If you want to hold on to your junky, dirty, deviating, compromising life, you could have it all day long. But understand this, you're going to lose everything. Why? Because you're following a loser. It's getting quiet in here. You'll never, come on, you'll never be victorious until you follow, a, come on, a victor. Come on, is there anybody here that's tired of following those old thoughts, old behaviors, old lifestyles? I'm done. Do not deviate from them. From what? The instructions your leader gave you. Well, pastor, who do you think you are? You're just a man like me. I understand I'm a man like you, but I'm not teaching my words. I'm teaching his words. And I'm the teacher that God put over you because I'm the one that's going to lead you, come on, to your victory as I teach you the word of God. And if you hear this word, it can change your life, change your future, change your kids. Understand, your kids are waiting for a leader. And if you don't become that leader, come on, someone out there is going to become their leader. The devil has a lot of false leaders that he's raising up to lead your children. And God is saying, that's going to end right now. I'm going to be your leader, and then you can lead them. I can't trust your leadership, mom and dad, because everywhere you're leading us is bad. I got quiet there. <laughs> we ain't going to bad. I, I, I understand when I speak like this and when the Holy Spirit sees me like this, I want you to understand this. It's not to condemn you, it's to change you. Well, 
Well, because the devil, while he wants to go over all your failures and all, that's the idea of coming here. So we could correct our thinking, repent of old ways, old behaviors, and say, I'm done. There's a death to the old way of living because I want new results. Do not deviate from them. Do not what? From what? The instructions. Turn it either to the right or the left. Stop rubbernecking. Some of us are super easily distracted. And you know what that means? When you're easily distracted, you're not focused. You'll never succeed until you get your focus. For those who are in track, you could lose a race by looking to the right or the left. Because when you're looking to the right or the left, you're becoming slower. And where you're looking is where you're headed. And God has said, stop looking there. Stop looking here. The devil's... And you're like, yeah. What? <laughs> what? Stop it. I'm a Christian. But what? What's, what? What do you want? And God's like saying, you're, I mean, we're at war, and you already got distracted by a whistle from a gangster? A commercial messes you up like, oh, it's time to get a drink. That Budweiser looks so good. Excuse me, honey. I got to go. I got to go. got to go to the store. I'm going to do something. You got distracted. Stop looking to the right or the left. Keep your focus. Because if you keep your focus, this is the, the promise. Someone say, this is the promise. Someone say it with me. This is the promise. Then... You will, not might, be successful in everything you do. And God is saying, I'm giving you instructions to succeed in every endeavor of your life. I never meant failure for anything that you're touching. You're just instructions away. And, and a lot of us, you've been infatuated with all kinds of nonsense. There's people in this room that you even call yourself a witch because you learned some stuff on Harry Potter. <laughs> Stop messing with me. I put a curse on you. Trying to learn witchcraft. And you call yourself a good witch. I'm talking to somebody here in this room. And, and, and because you're practicing that witchcraft, I understand that, that I understand you're being led by the wrong spirit. You're not going to succeed. You're going to fail. You're going to be miserable. You won't be able to sleep. Come on. It's going to mess up your relationship. It's going to mess up your future because you can't be out there trying to curse people and think you're going to get a blessing back. God is saying, come on, it's time to renounce that spirit of witchcraft and say, I'm done with the Ouija boards. I'm done with the horoscopes. I'm done with the crystals. And I'm going to follow Jesus as my Lord and Savior. And he's saying, if you follow my instructions and let me lead your life, I guarantee you this, you'll succeed in everything you do. Does anybody want to succeed in this house? I'm the, we're done. I got the point number one. I, I could talk about this for 10 years. Are you guys learning something? We're breaking this down. If I were you, I'd invite your coworkers to this. They don't want to know about church. They don't want to know about God. I guarantee you when we talk about this, they say, why didn't you invite me earlier, dummy? <laughs> so you had all this information to let me know? This has helped me succeed. Right. When we started this church, I ended with this story. I really wanted to be a successful church. And being successful meant this. I want the maximum amount of influence. I want to learn how to do this right. And I knew I didn't know how to do it. 
So you know what I did? I went to the most successful churches in Southern California before we started this. And I would attend their services. I just write down notes. And I found out that success had footprints, steps. And when I saw them succeeding with thousands of people in and out their doors, people getting saved, set free, filled with God's presence, when I looked at it, you know what I said? I can do that. Amen. You know why we could do it? Because God uses simple human beings. You don't have to have a high IQ to be successful. You have to have a high level of obedience. All you need to do is follow instructions. So I, I saw the instructions. I wrote them down. I talked to my team. I could look at their children's ministry, look at their youth ministry, look at how they do their services. We can do it that way. And then what I did after that, I called their office. I said, I want a private meeting with the pastor of this church. I said, who is it? It's Marco. Who are you? We're thinking about starting a church, but we don't know what we're doing. And we just want some advice and some instruction from your pastor because he's a great pastor, he's a great leader, and we can see the success. And we want to be able to reach people and influence people like he does, but we're not going to do it without mentorship. And when they heard that, every single one of those pastors set a meeting with me, even though they didn't know me. And I'll tell you why they set a meeting with me, because they're not used to hearing that. Oh, somebody that wants to learn. Oh. Do you know you'll never succeed when you're trying to show off what you know in front of a leader that knows more than you? You're not there to show off what you know. You're there to learn what you don't know. That meeting is not successful if you just showed off the whole time. Well, I'm doing this. I'm doing this. Who? They're, you think they're like, whoa. You know what they're thinking? I thought you wanted to learn. So I, I, I took my pen and I, and I told him this. I go, look, I got a notebook. I'm going to ask you some questions. You don't have to work on this, this, this meeting. You don't have to work on it. I've worked on it. And I got questions for you. And after we're done with the questions, you're free to go. But I guarantee you this, I told him. This is what I tell every leader that I met with. You're not wasting your time with me. Because every single thing that you teach me, I'm going to apply, not tomorrow, I'm going to apply, not tomorrow, right now I'm going to apply because I desperately want to succeed because people are dependent on me. And you know what we did? We applied every single thing we learned and lo and behold, we got their results and right now we're moving towards greater results than they've ever achieved. And it all happened not because we're so smart. Come on, we know how to follow well. And if there's instructions to succeed, I just want to learn them. And there's success instructions for every part of your life. Whatever you're struggling, find someone that's conquered what you're conquering, succeeded in the area you want to succeed, and learn how to get instructions and follow them. And I guarantee you, you'll get their same results. Let's end it. The first step out of all of this, and we'll end it with this, is to make up your mind who you're going to follow. Now, you could complain about how bad your life is, but if you're not willing to change your thinking and admit I'm making bad decisions and I'm doing my will and understand this, I'm sinning. That means missing the mark. I'm off. And as long as you're off, you could be hoping for your life to get better, your relationships to get better, your emotions to get better. But understand this, you're going into a deeper hole than you ever were. There has to be a time where you acknowledge, I'm off. I don't know how to fix it. And I'm telling you how to fix this. The first step is, is realize you don't know how to fix it. Realize that you are sinning. And what you're doing, it, what, everything you're doing is going to lead to death, not victory. Things are going to start dying in your life and continue to die. Your emotions, your joy, your peace, your vision, your clarity, all, your, your freedom is all going to begin to die. You're going to be hopeless. And not only that, you're going to be passing that on to everyone you know. But there has to be a time in your life that so I'm done living the way I'm living. 
And Jesus is saying this, what he's saying to you, follow me. Follow me. Now, I know how to get you there. I know how to save you. And I'm not here to judge you. I'm here to forgive you. And I'm not only going to forgive you. This is what I'm going to do. I'm going to come inside of you and transform your life from the inside out. I'm not offering you religion. I'm offering you relationship, and I'm offering you my power, and I'm offering you eternal life. This is true. The Bible says, what does it profit a man to gain the whole world and lose his soul? And I'm talking to someone that you're financially successful and you think you've made it, but the truth is you haven't made it because if you die right now without Jesus, you're, you're, you're going to experience the greatest failure of your life. You're going to be separated from God forever and ever, lost, not because, not because you couldn't be saved, is that your faith was in you and your faith was in your money and your faith wasn't in your, in, come on, in your Savior. And all I'm saying is you can make money, but don't put your faith in your money because your money can't save you on Judgment Day. I want you to make as much money as you can, be the biggest blessing you can, but be careful that your success doesn't turn into pride and you lose it all. So today, you're in this room, and, and this is reality. The richest person in this room is the one that has eternal life. And then we could go from there. Everything you add from there is great. But eternal life. Choose your leader. Just say, follow me. No one's going to get to heaven by accident. You're not, no one's going to say, oh, I can't believe I'm here. How'd I end up here? You're going to end up there by making a choice here while you have breath in your lungs. There's going to be a day you breathe your last breath. Choices are over. Choice right now. You say, follow me. You can say yes or no, but Jesus loves you and he believes in you. Everything I've said, what don't you want from it? Direction, peace, joy, victory, purpose. You could have all of it if you just change your leader. If you're in this room, you say, pastor, I'm not sure I'm right with God, but I want to get right with God. I want to give my life to Jesus, and I'm ready to follow Jesus for the rest of my life. And I follow Jesus by realizing I've been doing it the wrong way. I'm done living my own, by my own way. I want to do it His way. He's the way. He's the life. He's the truth. I want to do it His way. I'm done. I'm at the end of my rope. I can't fix me. I'm done. Someone's depressed, and God's saying, I'm going to set you free from your depression, your hopelessness, your struggle, your sadness, your loneliness. I'll set you free. Come on. Follow me, Jesus is saying. I'm going to count to three. You say, Pastor, that's me. I'm not sure I'm right with God, but I want to get right with God. I need forgiveness of my sins. I want to choose Jesus as my leader. I'm ready. I'm done doing it my way. That's called I'm repenting of my sins. One, I want you to raise your hand saying, that's me. I want a new start. I want a new beginning. I want salvation. I want freedom. I want to start following the leader. I want to do it his way. I'm tired of doing my way. Two, when I say three, quickly raise your hands on this building. One two, three. Raise your hands all this building right now. Come on. This is your opportunity. Don't let this opportunity pass you by. Come on. I see the hand there. I see the hand there. I see the hand there. I see those hands over there. I see all those hands in the back. I see the hand there. I see those hands there. I want those to raise their hands. Just stand up. Come on. There's somebody else that you need to stand up. Those that raise their hands, stand up. Those that raise their hands, stand up. What you're saying, I'm done with my old life and I'm ready. I'm ready. I'm standing up. I'm ready to make a decision. Come on, someone else needs to stand up today. This is your moment. Come on, this is your moment. Don't be scared. Come on, baby, you can come up. Have her come up. Those that raise their hands, come up here real quick. Those that, come on, stood up. Come up here real quick. Let's give them a hand, church. Those online, come on. Come on, stand up where you're at. Say, Jesus, forgive me. I'm ready to follow you online. Come on, church. Someone's choosing Jesus as their Lord and Savior. I'm done. I'm ready to obey God's instructions. Love you, man. Love you. Love you, mama. Love you guys. Let's pray. Are you ready? Love you. Ready? Let's be soldiers for Jesus. Proud of you, honey. Proud of you. Come on up. Awesome. Let's do this. We're going to pray right now. Come on, church. The Holy Spirit is touching people. Come on, they're being touched by the Spirit of God right now. Don't take this moment for granted. Come on, there's churches that have died, and there are 20 people right now. They used to be thousands because the church got, come on, they got lazy. They took things for granted. Let's not ever take a soul for granted. This is a victory right here. Love you. That's it.
Come on. He's giving up his chains right now. Come on. This represents the addiction. This represents, come on. This represents the past. Let's do it. Jesus breaks chains. Just come up forward. Come on, everybody, come forward. Proud of you. I'm going to say this. It takes a real man and woman to live for Jesus. Anyone could follow their addiction, their pain, their hurt. You could follow the, the past and, oh, my gosh, I wish my boyfriend come back. And God says, come on. You have more faith in your boyfriend than you do me. It's time. God has a better life for you. Are you done? Are you ready to follow Jesus? Come on, follow us together. Come to church with us. This is your family. And this I'll tell you. I've been in the city for 18 years now. And this is what I, I promise you. I ain't going nowhere. I'm going to be here till the day I die. I'm not no visiting pastor. I'm here. And that means if we lose connections because you left, I ain't, I'm still here. Don't let the devil offend you out of your church. Make you critical. So, but there's, you know, there's some people that got issues. I know that's why we're here. That's you in a, I can't believe there's sick people. It's a hospital, homie. Relax. There's a hospital too, right? Come on, but there's also a place of resurrection. There's a place of hope. There's a place of instruction. There's a, come on, there's a university for success in life. I need you to make a commitment to follow Jesus. And how you follow Jesus, you follow his instructions. I'm no longer, say it with me, I'm no longer going to do it my way. I'm ready right now to surrender my will to you. Thank you, Jesus, for dying on the cross to pay the price for all the wrong things I've done. Save me now. Set me free. I open my heart. Jesus, come in. Take over my life. Give me power to overcome addictions. Set me free from demons, depression, destruction, fear, anxiety. Heal me from this day forward. I confess you, Jesus, as my Lord and Savior. Fill me now with your Holy Spirit and power. I repent of all my sins. I turn away from all my ways to follow you, Jesus. In Jesus' name, I pray. Amen. Come on. If you said that prayer, you're forgiven. Forgive yourself and start walking with Jesus. You are righteous. You're a man of God. You're a woman of God. And we're here. We're going to get some information from you. We're going to pray with you. And your next step is our Holy Warriors classes, baptism. We got two young men over here. I need coverage over here. Okay, we got to make sure we got this information. Sign everybody up. I got two. I got three men over here. I need three leaders over here. Leaders, I need some help on this side. Right over here. Boom, boom, boom. Uno, dos, tres. Come on. I got four guys over here. Four guys we need to cover on this side. Come on. Are there any leaders in this house? Discipleship leaders. Come on. I, over here, over here. I got four guys. Five guys over here. We're not going to miss anybody. Come on. Let's make sure we pray with everybody. Let's make sure we sign up everybody. Come on, Sunday. You don't want to miss it. Communication. We're going to learn how to communicate. Come on. Awesome. Come on. We got victory. Come on. Put somebody in your DG. Come on, put, invite somebody into your circle. Recruit them. Make sure they're connected. Don't just get the information, information. Come on, make disciples right now. Put someone in a DG. Put someone in a small group right now. 